Hello, everybody. It looks like we are live on Facebook. This is Alex Koble Frakes. I am super excited to be with you today on this week three of our cycle challenge. How's it going? I am really curious who is joining in. If you are here live, go ahead and type a comment. Let us know where you are tuning in from. Let us know what is going on with you. I'm really excited again, you know, to start this cast today and be able to offer this information with you guys. This group has been so fun, really growing this momentum. Um, and I've had a lot of fun coming here week after week with you guys. And today we are going to talk about ovulation. So it's super exciting. So again, welcome, excited to have you here. If you are live or catching the replay, go ahead and let us know where you are tuning in from. We're excited to have you. So just a few announcements as we are getting started here. So this, um, I wanted to just remind in case you're just new with us, if you're starting this week, this is the third week that we're doing these videos. And so you can definitely catch those in the group. This is a social learning group. So there are um, going to be units on the left-hand side that have the worksheets and videos in them. So you can definitely check those out. Um, and yeah, we're just really excited. We've got um, Navidad joining us. Hello, how's it going? Where are you tuning in from? Thanks for joining us today. So we're going to begin by just um, doing a little check-in and seeing if you guys know where you're at within your cycle this week. So if you do know what phase you're in, I'm really curious how have you been thinking about partnering with that phase of your cycle? Um, we've started to really get behind some of this, the nitty gritty, some of the juicy details between each of the phases. Um, so I'm curious if you're tuned in, if you know where you're at in your cycle and how are you partnering with your cycle this week? So I um, wrapped up ovulation, which was what we're going to talk about today, and I'm in the luteal phase, and I'm using this energy this week um, really excitedly to get organized for the holidays, about to have a lot of people over, so using it to clean, to organize, to feel really um, well prepared to have people over, so that is what I'm doing today. So I'm curious, if you know where you're at, how are you partnering with the energy of your cycle? And again, let us know where you are joining us from today. So before we jump into anything, I want to go over some agreements that we're making together as we're doing this cast. Hey, Marjorie, thanks for joining us. Um, how are you? Where are you at in your cycle? How are you partnering with that? Let us, let us know in the comments. Morgan, welcome. Nice to see you ladies jumping on. So again, we're just going to go over some quick announcements, agreements that we're making together today before we jump into the new information this week. So agreement that we're going to choose to make together, number one is the big red rule. Your body is the ultimate authority. It is more important than any expert. And the closer that you get with your body, the easier that it's going to be understand what she's asking you for and what she's telling you. So really start to clue in. We talk about cycles thinking. We talk about you know, writing things down and, and kind of tracking where you're at. We've done some videos on that. Those are things that you can go back to and check out with. But honestly, the more that you start to understand your specific cycle, the easier all these pieces are going to be to fit together. The second, um, the second agreement that we're going to make together is that I'm going to be going over some baseline information. We're going to go kind of speaking to the average. I'll be happy to answer questions, but this may not directly explain you exactly, but it can maybe be kind of that normal or that average. So no big deal if things don't exactly line up. Not, not a problem at all. Hey, Maria, thanks for joining us. We are just going over some agreements. I'd love to hear where are you tuning in from? Let me know. Type in the chat, you guys, where are you joining us in from today? The third agreement that we're going to make together is that we, I don't know all the answers, um, but I really will have a commitment to tell you if I don't know something and help find an answer, if at all possible. And the last agreement we're going to make together is honesty is really important, right? So there aren't, there aren't a ton of spaces where we can talk about our cycles, where we can talk about our periods, where we can talk about ovulation fluid, all of these different things. So this space gets to be that space. This is really protective where all questions are open, no big deal. There's this, this is a no judgment zone. This is really a space to be curious, get curious with each other and build community. So those are our agreements that we are going to go over today. And again, 
Welcome, excited to have you. Love to hear where you are joining us from. I'm in Iowa and we've had some really nice sunny weather. So it's, I've been enjoying that. I've been doing lots of walks lately. So that's been really fun. So let me know where you're joining in from and let me know where you're at in your cycle uh, and how you are partnering with your cycle this week. Really want to hear that from you all. So today we are um, we're going to be talking about ovulation. And before we do that, I want to do a recap from last week. So last week we talked about the follicular phase. This phase is coexisting at the same time with our period at the beginning. And it is marked by the rise of estrogen relative to progesterone. Um, and it really helps to perturb um, to prepare those maturing follicles for potential fertilization. So that is the short one-liner. If you kind of are missing some of those pieces, go back and check that replay from last week um, because it's gonna be a great deep dive for you. Um, checking in here with Maury, she says, feeling pretty low energy, went to a Reiki energy class Friday, gained so much knowledge about moon cycles. And my body is requesting rest today. So I've been off of my feet. Oh, Morgan, genius. We're way to go. Do you know where you're at in your cycle? If it's asking you for rest, bro, bro. So I love to see that comment. Thank you for, for sharing that. All right. We, um, She's still, she's still kind of looking where she is at exactly. Great at tracking the stuff that you're doing with the agenda. That's going to really help out a lot. So awesome. So we are going to dive into ovulation and I am going to share my screen so you guys can see some information that I prepared today. Really excited to share this with you. So again, all that we're doing this series, it's all about a reintroduction to our menstrual cycle. Menstrual cycle is not just our period. It is really this process that we're constantly moving through, that we are constantly ebbing and flowing through with the four phases. Um, and really in order to reclaim our power, we've got to understand how it fluctuates so that we can start to partner with it. So I'm excited to be sharing this information with you guys today on the uh, ovulation phase. So the ovulation phase can really feel like that inner summer. That can be a helpful way to start to think about it. The energy can pair really well with one of those activities that we may want to be doing in summer. Um, so today what we're going to cover is a deep dive into the phase. This is our manifesting time. We can be really powerful manifestors during ovulation. We're going to talk about some potential challenges or a little bump people can feel with this phase. And we are really going to look at a how we can begin to partner with this um, part of our cycle. So excited to go over all of this with you guys today. So I wanted to talk a little bit, I know um, we've mentioned a few pieces about this, but I really kind of wanted to talk about the, the agenda period origin story today because it really is connected to ovulation. So when I was starting my health coaching business in 2018, I was a little all over the place and I decided to start checking my sales calls, my um, the conversations that people signed up with me for me to be their health coach. And I saw something really interesting is that I was actually having higher sales conversions when I was ovulating. So more people were saying yes to sign up for programs, to come work with me. And this got me so curious. I did not expect expect to see that at all. And so I really had to do some digging and I got really excited to use that knowledge that I had heard, um, that I had learned to actually make other impacts in my business. And I wanted to see what else I could, what else I could do, how else I could partner with my body. But really it started with this information coming to me in that ovulation phase, right? Seeing that if I chose different activities around this part of my cycle, they just went better because I was naturally more inclined or found them to be easier. And so this became this huge benefit for me. And so with that is why we decided to make the agenda periods actually help people understand those four phases and know how they could best utilize those four phases to really, really improve their lives and businesses. And so I'm really excited to be sharing some information about ovulation today. It's going to be super, super fun. So 
overall high level of reintroduction to our cycle. We've got these four phases. We go through the menstrual phase that tends to be days one through seven, the follicular phase that again is kind of coexisting over here, starting on day one, but goes till about day 13 or 14. Then this period of ovulation, the ovulation phase, there's kind of a little window that we'll go into and then into the luteal phase. So again, this is what is going on in our uterine cycle. Um, so it's really, it's really kind of interesting to start to see how this pattern is laid out. And um, let me just move myself over here. <laughs> and so again, here's what's kind of going on in the ovaries versus in the uterus. And you see this little place where they both overlap and it is the ovulation time. So last week we talked about follicular and today we're going to talk about ovulation. And this one is our short, one of our shortest phases and also it's a little bit tricky to pin down because the time where the actual egg comes out of the follicle isn't a lot of time, but there can be kind of these, these days or these hours on either side of that where fertilization is possible. So it kind of becomes this like this fertile window and that can really be like our, our peak ovulation energy time. So before we dive any further, I'm really curious, what comes to your mind when you hear ovulation? Um, I think this can be a pretty charged word. This can be a um, exciting time, especially with people who are potentially trying to get pregnant. And it can also be a kind of maybe dangerous time or some dangerous implications if we learn this in school, talking about potential pregnancies or you know even um, higher sexual energy for us as women. So there can be a really um, highly charged thoughts and feelings around this space. I'm curious for you, what do you learn about? What have you learned about? And what comes to mind when you hear about ovulation? We had some really interesting posts come up last week talking about, you know, how are we able to step into the feminine if we maybe by choice or or what, for whatever reason, choosing not to have kids, or maybe it's not possible, and how we kind of look at ourselves in society as women if we're choosing not to, to use that, our ovulation potential to create children. And so I just am really curious, I wanted to do a check-in with you all on what you have thought or heard about this phase, because it's really important to understand where we're coming from with these pieces. So I'd love for you to say in the comments below, what has um, come up for you around ovulation? What have you heard about or what are any of the implications that you know about so far? Um, hey, Melissa, thanks for joining us. And we also have Veronica and Sunny. Let us know where you are coming in from. Type that in the comments. Let us know where you are tuning in from today as we dive into the awesome knowledge about the ovulation phase. So high level, the, um, this is the phase where the egg is released in the fallopian tube. So those maturing follicles have been doing their race to the finish line. And the one that one or maybe two that kind of matures, then it, it will burst out of its follicle and it'll be released into the fallopian tube during the ovulation phase. So this can be that really peak of energy. This can be a high time. Um, and this is something that we started to find with people we work with, particularly if you are introverted, this can maybe even be a little bit of an overwhelming energy because it can be um, really, really potent and really intense. But you also may look and feel your best during this phase. You may feel you have an easier time communicating and you may even be best received during this phase. So this is kind of like, you know, what I was talking about, learning about my sales getting bigger and better when I was ovulating. And we'll kind of go into some of those pieces in a bit. Oh, rainy Florida. I'm sorry, that's rainy in Florida. Um, I am in Iowa and we've been having lovely weather, which is strange. We're normally like the opposite for this time of year, Melissa, but I'm glad to have you with us today. So oh, I'm actually just stay here. Um, so again, the ovulation is when the egg it's we're going to kind of talk high level about this because it can be a little confusing again to pin down exactly where you are at and exactly knowing when you're ovulating um, so ovulation itself is actually the egg viability when it comes out lasts for about 12 to 24 hours once it's released um, and if not fertilized then it starts to dissolve but the ovulation phase is a longer range due to the fertile quality cervical mucus and we're going to go into some more detail about that as well in a few seconds. But I want to do a couple of disclaimers about ovulation. Um, so first of all, kind of when we look at what's normal versus not normal, it's pretty 
it's, it's a myth that everyone ovulates on day 14 of their cycle. This really depends on the length of your cycle. And so tracking that information and just like knowing, okay, it's going to be day 14 for me may not be may not be true based on your specific cycle. So we wanna actually really start to understand our particular body because this is different for everyone. Um, another kind of disclaimer is the patterns that I'm going to describe, particularly when talking about cervical mucus or different things like that, may not line up for you if you are dealing with something like PCOS or endometriosis because they can actually be false flags. So I know that can be a little bit frustrating. Um, so, I'm just kind of, again, going to talk to the average today, and we will be going over in the future some of those other more specific challenges like PCOS and endometriosis. We're going to kind of do some deep dives and looks at some of those problems as well, but we won't be going in depth on that today. And um, the, finally, we're going to talk about knowing when you're ovulating, and sometimes people use this information to either get pregnant or to not get pregnant, but this is not a true lesson in natural family planning. So please do not take this video as a how-to or as an instruction. You definitely need more resources before jumping into that, into that pool. Um, so this can be a great introduction and there can be some more information resources if you're gonna go that route. So um, those are just some of my disclaimers. So for a little bit of a deep dive, this phase, uh, again, we like to think of it as it's our, it can be our manifesting phase. It's, um, we, there are different people who talk about the egg wisdom or talk about, you know, that feminine energy and glow that happens during this phase. And so this is an energy that we can use to our advantage, regardless of if we are trying to have children or not. It can be really this um, highly attractive creative energy Again, this can feel like summer energy and some typical attributes would be um, where we can feel more outward, having higher visibility, really attractive to others, like really wanting to maybe be caretaking, mothering from some of our clients have said that it feels really easy for them during the ovulation phase. They feel like they're on their mom game, um, maybe optimistic or charming or high energy, magnetic, things of that nature. So these are some of those things associated with this ovulation phase. So I just wanted to kind of do a little bit of a better explanation on how to start to kind of understand that fertile window, because again, this one's a little bit trickier to pin down the exact time of when the ovulation happens. So ovulation lasts what you know when the egg actually comes out for about 12 to 48 hours, but you are potentially fertile for up to seven days or maybe even on some really exaggerated accounts up to 10 days, according to the most optimistic statistics. And this is because sperm can survive five, up to five days in the female reproductive tract. So ovulation is when the egg is actually released um, and the egg can survive for up to 48 hours before it can no longer be fertilized by sperm. This short time may be considered that actual ovulation period, but really when we're looking at your total fertile period is how long the egg is fertile and how long the sperm can wait for the egg can bind. So this is known as that fertile window. So you are possibly fertile for about, you know, up to seven days of your cycle, but the odds of conceiving at either end of that spectrum are small. So when we're looking at potential pregnancy, it's really kind of getting closer to knowing a, a couple of days before um, the egg will be released so that you can actually have the sperm already kind of like waiting. So how do you know that you're in that phase? So there are several things. And again, this is just really high level. So you will want a deeper um, family planning lesson if that's something that you're curious about. But how do we start to know that we are in that phase? So, one, so there are all these different symbols that we can start to look for that kind of help us clue into the fact that we're in that fertile window. So one of them would be temperature taking. So there's a lot of information that we can get on how to how the temperature fluctuates and how we can use that to clue us into where we're at. Um, next would be the fertile quality cervical mucus. The next thing to look for would be that increased sexual desire. Our actual, our bodies may push us to be more sexually, um, have that higher libido during ovulation if they, because our bodies are, you know, wanting to be impregnated. And then also the change in your cervical positioning. So your cervix may actually raise up 
up higher into your body, making it easier for the sperm. So those are a couple of combinations that you can start to track if that was something that you're interested in. And it's something that we talk about kind of knowing about with the agenda, just so that people get that idea around when they are ovulating. Again, to use that magnetism for whatever you are needing it for in your life. So let's kind of break some of this down. So again, the number of days, a little tricky to calculate and it is more of a range. This can also change as people, as women age, this range can get shorter, which is one of the things that they, they talk about can make it more challenging to conceive on the, on the later end. Um, it can do have to do with how hydrated you are. There, are. there are a lot of different factors that can kind of lead into this, which is why it's nice to have a various different symptoms to look at. In terms of moisture, fertile quality cervical mucus is what you want to look for. So that is the substance that can that sperm can survive in for up to those five days before the egg is released. Um, and it can look, it kind of looks like they also call it the fertile quality cervical mucus or egg white cervical mucus. It looks, it can look like egg whites. It can feel very slippery and you may even be able to stretch it in between your fingers if it comes out of your vagina. Um, it can feel very wet and again, extremely slippery. The energy level, think of summertime, high energy, holding lots of space and multitasking. And we can kind of feel like we, we may feel like we're on top of the world and foods, listen to what your body is asking for, focus on balancing the blood sugar to support the process of ovulation. And think of those foods that you may really be drawn to in the summertime. This can be a great way to, to use those guidelines for yourself. So some challenges, this, uh, while this is thought of as, you know, this awesome, fantastic time, there can be some challenges that are really brought about with this phase. So one of them, um, you know, that kind of comes up is this feeling that we can feel highly charged with this sexual energy. And due to our conditioning, this can feel really unsafe or dip difficult to manage. Um, there's, there's a lot of toxicity around women being sexual. There's a lot of unkind messaging. And so some women can feel really uneasy with this, this timing and not really sure how to lean into this, into this space and into this energy it can feel like a hard place to embody. And again, like I mentioned, um, with some of our, the people we work with who are introverted, this space can feel really overwhelming because it may be, it, it can be maybe a little bit opposite of their personality. So maybe if they're, they're more of an introverted person and they're really being drawn to be outward and talking to a lot of people that can feel like a, a disconnect and that can be a little bit challenging. As always, your loving awareness can really, really support, um, increasing that consciousness to our cycle and helping it get better. So these are some, you know, kind of things to think about. And if we have, if we don't have a plan for the cycle, we can feel kind of disoriented when we're highly energetic, we can feel a little bit all over the place. So it can be a great time to kind of think ahead and really start to use this energy to our advantage by having a plan for it. So I'm curious, what is a resonating with you guys? What questions are coming up about ovulation? Um, have you noticed any of these things for yourself? Have you noticed challenges or, or benefits from your ovulation phase? Have you thought about it one way or the other? I would love to hear any comments come through. I'd be happy to answer those for you. So I want to touch briefly on uh, ovulation phase and birth control. We're going to go over birth control in the future, but I just wanted to touch briefly on this. So there are many different combinations of hormones that are in these different med in, in these hormonal birth controls. And so I wanted to kind of go over them because we're talking about ovulation today. So typically on the pill, the way that they typically work is stopping ovulation and then maybe um, thickening the endometrium lighting to kind of stop sperm from coming through. But typically when you are on the pill, unless there's one I don't know about, it's one of the main things that it does to prevent pregnancy is to stop ovulation. So it's to stop those follicles from maturing um, versus the IUD. So one, you know, there are two different IUDs that are most common, Mirena, which is that hormonal IUD, and then the copper IUD. And with both of those, women sometimes ovulate. Um, on Mirena, women sometimes ovulate and sometimes not. And on the copper IUD, ovulation continues typically. 
So those are just something to kind of think about um, when looking at those different choices of the of the different kinds of contraceptions and, and how that affects us. Because if we're not ovulating, as we talked about a few weeks ago, we're not having that true period. And um, you, it also, we're, you know, we're not on our own hormonal cycle. And so again, that was just a kind of high level piece I wanted to touch on. And it's something I will definitely be going into more in the future. So Morgan said, knowing that my body doesn't ovulate is teaching me a lot. I'm learning that I need to get way back to the basics of personal well-being. Yeah, that is really powerful. So if you've got something going on that's stopping ovulation, or maybe you just do not ovulate, that can be pretty challenging, even if it's not with the, one of the hormonal birth control options. And so one of the things that we talk about is we can kind of borrow on the moon energy, and we will go over that again in the future. But you can start to kind of partner in some ways with those other natural cycles and, and lean into that energy as well. So Morgan, I'd love to hear more about that if you feel like talking about it. But I love your, your grounding on getting back to my well-being and really focusing there. That's fantastic. If anyone else has questions, I would love to, to hear from you. So pop them in, in the chat and I will definitely come answer them. So um, even, yeah, you're still having that period. Hey, Jesse, thanks for joining us. Um, so each phase of the cycle has different strengths, skill sets. And when we begin to take advantage of these different shifts in our cycle, everything changes. So I wanted to just go over high level. What are some of the tasks that can line up really nicely with this phase? So we think about high energy, summer, being out there, being extroverted energy wise. Some of the tasks that line up are really, again, having that plan and then recognizing um, how you kind of react to that energy. But some of those things that can go really well in this phase would be doing speeches or talks or workshops, connecting with other people, again, maybe going to networking. If you there is any part of the work that you do that involves sales, this can be a great time to, to really tap into that potential is during the ovulation phase. And then asking for what you want, you know, being really clear, we tend to be the most articulate during this phase. And so being able to ask for what you want and then receive it is super important as well. So those are some of the ways that we recommend starting to partner with the ovulation phase. And again, in order to really be able to capitalize and partner with that phase, we need to know that it's happening and when it's happening. Um, and so these are important pieces of that puzzle as well as starting to really understand so that we can then partner with. So I'd be really happy to answer any questions and I would love to hear what is your aha or takeaway from today when we are talking about ovulation? What is something that you hadn't heard before? What's something that got you scratching your head or got you a little bit curious? I would love to answer any of those questions. Hey, Krista, thanks for joining us. Hello. We are just wrapping up our chat on ovulation. So again, love to hear any of those ahas that you, that you all have with you today. And I just wanted to end on this quote today. It took me quite a long time to develop my voice. And now that I have it, I'm not going to be silent. Once we really start to partner with these phases, when we really start to understand them, it's just so powerful. And it allows us to be the best advocates for ourselves that we can be. When we go back to looking at the big red rule that we are our ultimate authority, Part of being able to advocate for ourselves is having the knowledge, having the cycle information and knowing where we're at in that cycle, knowing what's going on, that really allows us to be able to advocate for ourselves in that way. And so I applaud you all for being here, um, for dipping a toe in, for getting curious about cycles and for joining us on this journey. It's just really awesome. Veronica said, I tend to get headaches while, ovul while ovulation, trying to see why. Um, so Veronica, I would be really curious if you have started to track what day they're on on your cycle. Um, and are they, are, you, are they exactly on the day that you're ovulating when the egg is released or are they a little bit before or a little bit after? So starting to understand exactly when they're happening would be really interesting. Um, because sometimes when 
I know in like those hormone shifts. So when, you know, when the actually the ovulation is done and we're switching over to being more progesterone dominant, sometimes those shifts in hormones can cause different things. So I'd be really curious to see what day you are on. And if you see a pattern with what day you're on, um, Another thing that kind of just pops into my head is maybe thinking about if you're already high energy, do you tend, do you do caffeine? Do you tend to drink more or less on one time on those times? Because I know those kind of things, the, the food that we gravitate even subconsciously can really impact how we feel and how we take different parts of the cycle. So those are some food for thought. And I'd be happy to go over more stuff with you if you post any of those on our page. Um, so again, thank you all for being here. I'm, if I see any other questions, I'd be really happy to answer them. Um, and again, let's just be really studious and really curious about our own cycles. This is the way that we reach that, those levels of empowerment. So thank you for being here. Um, we will be coming back next week to talk about the luteal phase. The luteal phase can um, you know, be a little bit challenging for, for some. And so we're really going to talk about how to partner lovingly with this part of our phase. So that is all that I have for you today. Thank you guys so much and have a great week ahead. Thanks everybody.